seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Welcome all of you here to the Philip Morris R&D Cube here in Neuchâtel in Switzerland for the launch of the 2019 Ducati MotoGP team. Also, uh, a big welcome to those of you who are watching through the magic of the internet around the world. Uh, thanks for joining us here. It has been a beautiful day here in the heart of Europe on the banks of Lake Neuchâtel that we can just see outside of the window here. My name's Gavin Emmett, and I've been broadcasting on MotoGP for nearly 20 seasons now, which makes me feel old, I have to say. But I'm sure, like you, uh, still get excited at the start of another MotoGP season. Uh, and I've just get ready, get that itch to go racing, don't we? Um, you know what? It is exactly two months ago since the final race of 2018. Who can forget that in Valencia? Awful, awful conditions on that day, but it was a, a glorious victory, wasn't it, for Dovi and Ducati. Uh, and it seems so long ago now, and we're here now to kick off 2019 already, uh, ready to fire those Bologna bullets off for what should be another epic year of MotoGP action. Uh, as you'll only know too well, MotoGP is the pinnacle of motorcycle racing. And for Ducati, it's the crowning jewel in their racing portfolio. Now, in the next 45 minutes or so that we're going to be up here on stage, you are going to meet a whole team of people who are working behind the scenes to bring that title back to Bologna this season. Of course, Ducati have finished the last two seasons as runners-up in the MotoGP World Championship and in that time, taking 13 Grand Prix victories along the way. We're going to meet up here on stage, some of the engineers and brains behind the 2019 Desmond Sedici, the managers as well who are leading uh, the charge for their team. Of course, you know what's under here. Uh, the 2019 machines, of course, will unveil what is a stunning, stunning new livery for the team. And of course, we're going to meet the riders. I'm sure you're excited about meeting them up here on stage as well. They're the ones, of course, who will be putting it all out on track this season. But to kick things off, I want to start by introducing a man who is making BMI's vision a reality with his R&D team here at the Cube in Switzerland and all over the world as well. He's the president of science and innovation at Philip Morris International. So please give a warm welcome to Mr. Mirek Zielinski. <laughs> Thank you, David. Good evening, Mirek. Thanks for being here. Good evening and good evening to everybody. Welcome to everybody. A special welcome to all our guests, but also the, to those who are watching us through internet. And probably some of you, if not most of you, might be wondering uh, why we are here and, and what we are doing in Cube. So let me explain you what Cube is. Uh, Cube, Cube is kind of a home of our research and development department for Philip Morris. But probably more importantly, CUBE is also the heart of our innovation and of our way of thinking. And it encompasses the work of more than 400 scientists and engineers and experts in different fields of science who are relentlessly working on transforming our company, but not only our company. They are working on transforming the entire industry. They are finding solutions which are based on facts and science to improve the existing products and provide people with better solutions than the one they used to experience for many years. They are harnessing the scientific power which we build in this building. They are harnessing technological solutions and knowledge which we have in order to come with the products and solutions for humans, which are better. And they are discarding old solutions, and they are focusing on new. They are not afraid of stepping into space when the new technologies, new innovations have to be identified and communicated. And more importantly, they are doing it every day. They're working very hard. 
And this is why the concept of Mission Winnow was built in this building. Winnowing, in the traditional sense of separating wheat from chaff, in separating good from bad, in desired from undesirable, in desire from what we want, from what we don't want, is practiced every day in this building. And we are very much inspired by Ducati Corsa as well. We are very much inspired by our many years of collaboration and, and partnership. And today we are opening a new era in this partnership after all, this, all these years. We are, we are opening the era of Mission Winnow and Ducati being together, of Ducati joining Mission Winnow and Mission Winnow joining Ducati. We are inspired by the, 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 the way Ducati works and the way Ducati behaves and acts in every race, trying to find solutions, but also as a company with innovation, technology, and design, aiming at producing products which are providing safer, more reliable, and better bikes for consumers. When we think about what Ducati is and what Mission We Know is, and who we are and where it comes from, this match is, is just wonderful. And I have to say I'm very emotional today because this is the beginning of the journey, this whole concept which we are trying to tell people how much we believe in, in the power of passion which Philip Morris people have and the power of passion which people in Ducati Corsa has. It's telling me that we are opening something which in years might be seen as the beginning of something big and something new. So thank you Ducati. Thank you to the entire team. Thank you to all of you for joining something which I believe will be transformational like we are trying to transform the industry. Thank you for joining Mission Wino Ducati. Thank you to all of you. Thank you very much, Mira. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And thanks, of course, as well for hosting us uh, here at the Cube today. Now, it's time to introduce uh, another charismatic leader who's at the top of the tree as CEO of Ducati Motor Holding. I'm not sure there's anyone out there, actually, who invokes as much passion for motorcycling as he does. Please give a warm welcome onto the stage for Mr. Claudio Domenicali. Hi. Good to see you, Claudio. Thanks for being here with us this evening. Thanks, Gavin, and a uh, uh, big uh, thank you for every one of you being here. It's a big pleasure and uh, a big honor to kind of be introduced uh, with a so wide uh, introduction and uh, before everything let me just say that i'm very proud of being uh, in this fantastic cube you know it's the first time we make a presentation of the team uh, uh, together in a place uh, uh, which is a kind of uh, a place of our title partner uh, philip morris uh, and i want to thank smirek uh, really very much for hosting us here and hosting all, all of you in this place uh, thanks for being here as well claudio because uh, you've been there since uh, Ducati entered MotoGP in 2003 when there was that change in regulations to allow uh, four-stroke engines to, to enter into the championship. So to this day, what are the reasons behind such an important and non-stop commitment to this championship? Yeah, definitely. It's, a, it's a very hard work. Uh, it's a very strong commitment. And for sure, it's a, a, our strongest marketing tool. It's a, the, the way in which we make our brand and the value of our brand style, sophistication and performance more than everything to be known worldwide. Uh, but more than everything, uh, it's kind of uh, um, looking for the future and uh, research and technology. Um, and I think that uh, here in uh, kind of 50 meters from here, there is the new Panigale R, which uh, in my opinion is one of the single product you can buy in all the motorcycle industry, which is closest uh, to a racing bike and so for us racing means developing new concept uh, moving the boundary uh, all the engineers of digital linea make an exceptional job in kind of knowing the unknown uh, there is nothing you can uh, study there is no one book in which you can study what they're doing uh, and actually we are learning every day and everything we are doing then we revert in the vast majority into the bike that we sell to our customer, our passionate customer. And that's the single most important part of our commitment. And as a company, uh, Ducati, shall we say, is medium-sized. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, it's far. And, and you're competing against some 
industrial giants, really, that are, are producing millions of motorcycles a year. And you compete successfully as well. So in, in terms of economic resources, uh, uh, what do you need to compete against these giants? Yeah, the question is that if you ask Gigi Dalinia, which will come in a while, you will ask that you need a lot. Uh, so <laughs> it's, a, it's a kind of an expensive guy. Uh, but we are lucky in one way because we have... Uh, uh, good and passionate customer. We are a solid company with very good product, and so uh, we can sustain that. But we would never be able to do at the level we are doing without the support of all our partners, uh, uh, many of which are in this room that I want to thank directly, starting from our uh, main partner and title partner, which is Philip Morris, who is hosting us. And let me just take the occasion also to remind uh, a very important uh, uh, new joining of the team, uh, which is a main sponsor, which is Audi Sport, that I want to welcome directly. Audi is our uh, mother company, and uh, since this year, as we will see, Audi Sport has a prominent uh, position in the supporters of the team. So, and Audi and Ducati shares a lot of common value, and especially Audi Sport, which is a lot about uh, sophistication, performance, like Ducati. Claudio, you've been present at so many of these team presentations throughout the years, but I don't know, is there a common thread that unites them all, that runs all the way through? Yeah, I think every year it's kind of similar in one way and very different. Uh, we have different people, often different riders. Uh, um, but there is for sure something uh, which is linking all together. The first MotoGP presentation was back in 2003. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I think if I have to identify only one point uh, is the passion of the people that work in the project. Uh, and the passion of the people that back home are supporting us. Our fan, our clubs, our dealer, our partner. Actually, all together, we create a group of incredible, passionate people. And in the good and the bad moment, racing is about that. Uh, sometimes you win and there is an incredible energy. And sometimes it's very difficult. Maybe a couple of races difficult or maybe a couple of seasons. Mm. And actually, the strength of this group uh, have been being together in the good and bad point. Uh, and I have to thank all the supporters of Ducati, really, because this is making us the energy to create uh, the possibility to think for the future. Claudio, I think the passion comes from the top as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Claudio Domenicali. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> when someone speaks about racing like Claudio does, you know it's in their blood. You know that racing is a part of uh, the fabric, the DNA, really, of Ducati. Um, but something that, that he mentioned there as well, that everyone works as a team. There are uh, moments of being up and moments of being down as well. Last year at the MotoGP level, Ducati celebrated seven victories, seven pole positions uh, alongside as well, and a total of 14 podium finishes across uh, an 18-round season, 19, of course, uh, with one missing. But like in any emotional roller coaster of a racing season... As Claudio said, there were some glorious highs, but there were a few desperate lows as well. So, and a couple of months now to reflect on the 2018 season. How would you sum up that year? Uh, the 2008 was for sure another important year for the Ducati MotoGP. Uh, and here where so us grow and improve again for the fourth year in a row. Uh, both from a technical and a sporting point of view. Uh, in fact, we were very competitive, and in some cases even protagonist, uh, on tracks that have traditionally been more difficult for us. Mm. Uh, and on those where we were already competitive, we continue to be, to be competitive. From the point of view of the number of victories and podium achieved, we improved on our 2017 total. Uh, we also won with more riders, and even those riders that didn't win, they did really good race with the Ducati. So, you know, it was for sure a great year. The only problem of the last season is we cannot uh, keep uh, uh, the championship open until the last stage in, in, in Valencia like we did in the 2007. And this is a sign that even, uh, even our direct competitors uh, have improved. So, Gigi, what are the Ducati doing then to, to make it even better in 2019? You know, it's, it's simple. We must do better and improve more than we have done in the recent years, trying to bring ideas that can effectively increase the uh, competitiveness of our project. We have already begun 
to test it in the caress test uh, immediately after to find out uh, a good uh, starting point with a, with a new bike uh, in, in the Valencia after race. Uh, we will refine this idea in Sepang while in Qatar uh, immediately before the opening uh, race of the, of the season we will test as usual the new fairing. The evolution cover all the, the, the area, uh, aerodynamics, chassis, electronics, and uh, for sure also the engine is updated with more, with more horsepower. Which I'm sure some of your rivals won't be pleased to hear. Um, how have the regulation changes for this season affected your preparations? You know, the, the regulation have changed in two areas. The first being the electronics uh, with the introduction of the unique IMU and uh, a more restrictive electric scheme. But from this point of view, I expected a substantial equivalence in performance between the, the two systems. From uh, the dynamic point of view, uh, the 2019 regulations are certainly more, more uh, restrictive, both because they prevent the modularity of the fairing, that means the possibilities uh, to uh, apply or remove, or remove parts on the fairing, <clears throat> And uh, also because they uh, further restrict the, 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 uh, the size of the, of the wall fairing. Uh, I expect that their dynamic load will be slightly uh, lower in the 2018 bike. However, I hope that uh, after having changed the aerodynamic regulation for two years in a row, now we have arrived at the stability of rules that is the only possible cost saving in MotoGP. And of course, we know this year you've got a fantastic pair of riders who are going to be out on track. One who's in his seventh year with Ducati now, and the other who's been promoted from a, a Ducati factory-supported squad as well. So that's great news. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we have definitely changed is for sure the rider strategy. Uh, we have chosen to move from two riders who independently think uh, for each other, acting their own, uh, own interest regardless of the good of the team, to a system that, if possible, tended to optimize uh, the overall results of the team. I'm not talking about team orders, but uh, I'm talking about the synergy in the development of the bike and uh, in the setup of the bike during the race weekend. And Andrea De Vizioso has challenged for the title over the, yeah. over the last two years. You and he have a good working relationship now, don't you? Yeah, for sure. You know, Andrea has been Ducati since before my arrival yeah. in Ducati. So he knows very well all the people and our uh, way of, uh, of uh, uh, working. And uh, I would like to underline that, that the continuity is one of the most important things in, the, in, in, in our world, in the racing world. Uh, he did some great races last year, like in uh, Doha, like uh, in Brno, in Misano, and even in Valencia. Mm -hmm. But above all, he uh, has finished second in the last two World Championships, and uh, he has the determination to do better. Uh, and this is what we want to do all together. It'll be exciting to see what he manages. And, and Danilo Petrucci, of course you know him well, he's been in the Degatti family, but... What have you seen so far from him in, in, in the factory team? You know, Danilo uh, is a, have an important story with Ducati. He has been with us since 2015. Uh, he, has, he did many great races and have podium with us. Uh, he didn't win any race, but this has to be his main target for the 2019 uh, together with the uh, possibility to fight for the podium in all the races. Yeah, it'd be great if he could manage that consistently. I, f I feel a bit silly asking it, but is there any doubt what the aim is yeah. for Ducati this year? The goal we have uh, is the same for some years now, and is to fight for the, for the World Championship. For sure, we are not favourites, but we will really try much harder to make the 2019 a wonderful year for all the Ducatisti. Gigi? Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gigi Dalinia. Thank you to everybody. Thank you, Gigi. Now, of course, while Gigi might spearhead uh, the MotoGP project, there are lots and lots of engineers and technicians who work tirelessly 
throughout the whole year, but especially over this period, over the winter, uh, to ensure that Ducati isn't caught flat-footed and continues to push on with technological advances that will set the motorcycle apart this season. So something new this year. We thought we'd invite up onto the stage two of the men who are the brains behind the beast, and they could explore, uh, explain a little bit more than any of us could about the bike that will compete this season. So please welcome up onto the stage Ducati Corse Technical Director Davide Barana and the Aerodynamic Development Engineer Eduardo Lenocci. Hi, Gavin. Great to see you, Good evening. Evening. Nice to see you. Thanks, Eduardo. And this is something new that we've got this year, trying to bring you uh, a few of the people who really are the brains behind the bike. Let's move over to one side, Eduardo, because we have got a few slides uh, ready to come up here up on stage. Uh, as I mentioned, Davide Barana here is the technical director at Ducati Corsi. And when people think Ducati, they think about the engine, don't they always? Tell me something about it, because generally you've done okay in this field, haven't you? Engine has always been uh, a strength of Ducati since the beginning of the GP project. And uh, from there onward, we have always increased the power of the engine, except the era when, the, by regulation, the total displacement was reduced, of course. So, so how do you go about achieving that and, and constantly improving? Well, this achievement is a result of several factors. I would say first, uh, the passion of our work that reached the peak when we are talking about engine, but uh, it's not only patient. It is uh, the possibility to count with an uh, exceptional development group with a very high professional skills, together with a wide range of uh, development tools that are state of art. I'm talking about test bench, laboratory, engineering, software. I also want to add that uh, today's result are also uh, based on our long tradition, our technical heritage, together with a very positive and innovative approach to the development process. You talk about that approach, and I'm sure there's lots of journalists around here wanting to know the secrets behind the success. Can you tell us something a bit more about how in practice you actually work? Okay. Mainly the uh, development process is circular. We start from the beginning, we collect ideas from the world, development team, put them on the table and try to evaluate better with the mean, by means of a, a simulation software. The more promising pass to the second phase, there is the proper design phase, when we start to interact also with manufacturers for the manufacturing of the parts. When parts arrive in ours, finally, we can test it on bench for reliability and performance assessment. And then, of course, if uh, everything goes well, they go on track for the final assessment. So that's the whole process of, of getting the bikes out on track. Now, of course, I mentioned the engine, but um, part of that is Ducati is synonymous uh, with the innovative solution that is the, the Desmo valve train, isn't it? Yeah, Desmo Drome valve train, Desmo, as we call it. <laughs> yeah. It's a, a uniqueness of Ducati, and it's a very nice example of how our values can be found also in a technical solution. Valve train are essential for achieve performance in the engine. They provide the movement of the valve. The most common system in use are the cam and spring. That there is a cam that provides the opening stroke of the mechanism, and then the back stroke is provided by the spring. But because a uh, racing engine at the level very high to achieve high level power. Springs are no longer available, um, are unable to, to keep this movement. And also it tends to break. So with Desmo, we have solved a very, uh, in very clever way the problem by eliminating the spring, replacing it with a, a second mechanism that mirror the opening one and work together with it. So the idea, it's really simple, but of course, <laughs> it's not so simple. It uh, needs a lot of dedication to make it work in a so uh, extreme uh, environment. So I can summarize that Desmo is an example of how an alternative and innovative approach can pay back. Of course, it needs dedication, never give up approach, 
but once you get it, for sure we can say to have an advantage. Yeah, you mentioned there about the innovation. And I think we should bring forward Eduardo Lenocci, who's the Cati Courses uh, Aerodynamic Development Engineer. And uh, in terms of technical solutions on its racing bikes, Ducati has been innovative, hasn't it, over the years. So what has changed in terms of the consideration for aerodynamics at, at Ducati? Um, well, when I started to work uh, in Ducati almost uh, more than six years ago, um, my background experience was based in Formula One, uh, yeah. sorry, on aerodynamics, or automotive aerodynamics, yeah. uh, especially racing cars. Um, so if you consider, for example, um, Formula One, as you can see from... Uh, you know, during the races, uh, uh, there is a lot, uh, a lot of money invested in, uh, in aerodynamics development. Um, what I've and we learned from that word and transferred to my experience here in Ducati was a different approach in terms, for example, of um, using uh, specific tools, so identifying correct tools and using them in a proper way. Um, uh, if you consider even aerodynamics and vehicle dynamics together, um, they are very, the cooperation of both these uh, two areas is very helpful for us in understanding and in judging all the, difference, all the different configurations we are testing and we are investigating while developing the bike. Just come forward a sec, so we've got you in the light. You mentioned tools there, yes. specific tools that, that Ducati are using. So what, what are the specific tools that help you, you know, find the solution for MotoGP? Well, for example, um, we introduced a massive use of CFD, which is the computational fluid dynamics. Uh, that means the mathematical simulation of what happens around the bike in terms of aerodynamics. Um, in the past, we used to develop bikes uh, in the wind tunnel. Yeah. So we used um, a full-scale model uh, made up of uh, actual existing components, of spare parts coming from existing bikes, for example. Um, by using the CFD, uh, there are a couple of advantages, for example, I can tell you. Um, on one side, uh, the huge amount of data coming out from simulation helps uh, the engineers to understand with deep knowledge what happens on the bike in terms of aerodynamics. Uh, because in the wind tunnel you cannot see pressure distribution or streamlines or stress distributions on the surface of the bike, while you have this on CFD. Um, so when you go in the wind tunnel, you just do optimization work, which is as important as developing new concepts. And on the other side, you don't have to wait for um, existing parts to, mount, uh, to be mounted on the bike as a model. Uh, so you can start your development quite earlier than before. Yeah, so we can see all some of the, the things that you've been doing with that uh, computational fluid dynamic, dynamic system. Um, what do you think about your MotoGP competitors in terms of their aerodynamic development? Is that a cheeky question? I don't know. Yeah. Um, do you think they've been able to catch up and, and close the gap on, on Ducati? Um, well, if you had a look uh, a few years ago, maybe, I don't know, five years ago, if mm. you had a look at a starting grid during the GP races, uh, you can see all the body works of our competitors. Uh, they look like quite similar between each other. And... Uh, uh, maybe they haven't even through changed that through years, maybe a few of them. Mm. Uh, why in the recent uh, couple of years, for example, um, a, a lot of aerodynamic details uh, started to be mounted even on our competitors' bikes. So strange appendages and stuff like that, and uh, even depending on the rider. So on one side, um, I can tell you that we are happy about that <laughs> because we started in the very beginning and maybe we were right in doing that and in investing um, money and time on that. And on the other side, this is also motivating for ourselves because it gives you the pressure to push a little bit forward the level of, of development and new ideas to come. And heading into the future, we've heard about regulation changes, these kind of things from Gigi. What are the aerodynamics challenges uh, and how are you going to deal with them? Well, uh, as said, uh, as Gigi mentioned before, the regulations have been changed uh, in the last few years in terms of uh, uh, what was available and possible in terms of making aerodynamics. Um, for sure, uh, as engineers, we would like that uh, these kind of changes would have been aimed at improving performance, but sometimes this is not the case, so it's just a matter of reducing and limiting, for example, for cost reductions, uh, as it happened before. Um, but my opinion is that uh, there are so many areas 
uh, to be explored in terms of aerodynamics. And in any case, our methodologies we're going to use uh, will be the same and uh, will allow to take the chance uh, to take the chance to face these challenges no matter where it comes from. We look forward to seeing what innovations you come up with. Eduardo, Davide, ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a round of applause for that fascinating insight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to ask Eduardo and Davide to stay with us uh, up here on the stage. Uh, we're going to take, in the meantime, just a quick look behind the scenes at the preparations going on ahead of the 2019 MotoGP season. Well, you got a little bit of a... But yeah, I think it deserves that. That's what's been going on to get uh, the riders here today. And it's time to meet them now. They are the men tasked with taking the Desmosedici to the pinnacle of MotoGP. One of them is the Cati's second most successful rider now in MotoGP. Ten victories over the last two seasons. And this season... He has a new teammate in the squad, and he's been promoted from the factory-supported team at Pramac. Please welcome this year's mission winner, Ducati riders, Andrea Davizioso and Danilo Petrucci. Ciao, Dobby. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Danilo, and welcome to be here with us. There you have them. Uh, Andrea De Vizioso alongside me be running a 0-4 this year and Danilo Petrucci here in the full new Mission Winnow Ducati colours. But you know what? Before we speak to the two riders, I think we all know what you want to see out there. I think it's time, fellas, if you go over to your bikes and we unveil them for everyone who is waiting to see them. So, Dovi, I think your bike will be on the left, yep. and Danilo, your bike is on the right, and we've got Davide uh, and Eduardo ready to help you. So, if you want to make your way over to the ladies and gentlemen, the presentation of the 2019 Mission Winner Ducati Machine. Well, I'm glad we got a round of applause, first of all. People obviously uh, like it. Dovi, I'm going to ask you, first of all, what do you make of your brand new livery for 2019? Well, uh, every year I say the same things. <laughs> <laughs> it's nicer and nicer, and uh, this year is even uh, nicer. And uh, I feel good with the bike uh, when I look at all this uh, red. Uh, I love this bike, for sure. Uh, and Danilo, I'll ask you about it, because... You get to wear full factory colours for the first time. They tell me a bike that looks good is a fast bike. Do you, do you agree? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's both because it's very, very fast and very nice and uh, very, very red. <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and we like seeing you in those colours as well. It's great to, to have you here with us. Um, Dovi, we mentioned it just before when we introduced you. Ten victories over the past couple of seasons and two silver medals in the bag. So how are you going to make that silver medal gold this year? <laughs> you know, uh, it's difficult uh, to win. Uh, but uh, in the last two years, uh, we uh, finished second with a really nice season. Uh, two completely different seasons. Uh, two years ago, uh, we fight until the last round. Last year, unfortunately, no. But uh, at the end, uh, I'm uh, really happy about last year because it was uh, a bit uh, of up and down. Uh, I did some mistake. Uh, this is uh, an important experience to make something better this year, but uh, uh, I think we understood uh, a lot of things during the season, from uh, Borno, in the middle of the season, uh, uh, as Valencia. We did a lot of points. We fight uh, every race for victory, almost every race, so... 
really happy about the feeling I have with the bike. Uh, I know a lot uh, about the engineer uh, uh, inside of Ducati. So uh, all is good. I'm really, really happy, really comfortable. And I think uh, we can uh, fight really for the championship. And what about testing? Because obviously you tested uh, a version of the bike at the end of last year, Valencia and Jerez. You go to Sepang in, what, two weeks' time, more or less? How excited are you about kicking off the 2019 Challenge there? I'm really excited because uh, uh, this season is a bit different for me. I feel uh, better than last year. More confidence. Uh, for sure, every year uh, is a different story. Uh, but uh, the feeling at the end of the season... Uh, in the last two tests, it uh, was really good. We tried some uh, new part of, of the bike, and already our speed was good. Uh, in Sepang, we will have a full uh, new bike, so I'm really happy. Uh, I'm, I'm confident. I, I think uh, our level from the beginning can be really good. From that, we have to build again something more. Uh, we, I think we will have a lot of uh, material to try during uh, the first two tests before uh, the season starts. But uh, overall, uh, I'm really, really excited for uh, this season. We're excited to see you out there as well, challenging for victory yet again at Ducati. And alongside Dovi this year, a brand new teammate, of course, very familiar with Ducati. Um, how excited are you about testing the bike again? Because obviously you rode it at the end of, the, uh, of last year, and you, you know, this is yours. This is your full factory yeah. machine. <laughs> uh, was was already exciting in Valencia. The uh, the first time we we went out from the pit, uh, I was uh, my. Uh, it's it's like now my my heart is beating quite <laughs> quite strong, but uh, I like Andrea. I, I feel good. I'm I feel not not relaxed, but uh, conscious and. Uh, focus it because I know I have a quite clear mind I'm doing my work during this winter and um, I'm really looking forward to go to Sepang because this last year was not not a good race but uh, I think Andre and me can make a very very good work together I I can only learn from him and I hope to give, give back some some help during during the year you mentioned training there and also the teamwork with Dovi. I've seen you've been out motocrossing, you've been uh, training together out there. Um, how much are you looking forward to working as teammates with Dovi? Uh, Dovi has been always a target for me uh, since the first time I joined the Ducati family. <laughs> I'm always looking at his data and uh, trying to, to, to ride like him. And uh, I'm really, really happy to, to work with him because uh, he's very, very clever. And uh, I always say that Dovi is uh, uh, first a great guy, then a great rider. And uh, I think we can, uh, we can follow our target. We can perceive our target. We have uh, maybe two different ones, but uh, uh, I think we, can, we need one each other to, to reach. Hey, and you mentioned targets there, actually. What results would satisfy you this year? The, uh, uh, my, my target is to be satisfied at the end of the season. <laughs> it's not easy. And what would that it's be then? Easy. How, would, how are we going to get there? <laughs> <laughs> it's not... <laughs> it's, it's really hard to say in this moment of the season, but uh, for sure I want to be the status as a factory rider for many years. And uh, yeah, there is that is right on the, on the, the fairing. The, we have a mission. <laughs> <laughs> and you accept it. Ladies yes. and gentlemen, uh, our mission winner over the Cati Riders, Danilo Petrucci and Andrea De Vizio. So. <laughs> now, Danilo mentioned the mission. Mission Winnow uh, is not a product logo. It's a, a campaign and a message about striving to improve, as we heard from Mirek earlier on. Um, now, we're going to meet the man behind the design of the Mission Winnow logo. He's an Italian designer and an architect. Uh, so please welcome up onto stage, Mr. Fabio Novembre. <laughs> Hi, Hi Fabio. Hi, Gavin. Thanks so much for joining us up here. And uh, thank you, guys. This logo that we can see up there and on the side of the bikes is uh, your creation. Just tell us about how you came about yeah. this design. You know, giving birth to 
to an idea is designing a logo. You know, it's really, it's, it's basically you have to, to synthesize all the, um, all the values in it. You know, we were started from two words. One is mission, the other is we know. You know, mission is something that, according to me, transcends individuality. You know, we always think about me, myself, I, you know, I want to do things. I mean, mission is something that puts us all together. You know, it's something that we all share. Mm -hmm. It's a common view in some ways. And we know, of course, I mean, it's an old word, but it's a very wise and meaningful word. As Mirak was saying, it's dividing the good from the bad, the needed from the unneeded. It's really, it's the process of getting older, it's getting wiser in some ways, right? And so putting the two things together, it's, uh, it's a force itself. It's such a strong force itself. And we know that in physics, a force is a vector. And the vector has got a magnitude, and we can feel the magnitude from this place. I mean, this is a research center in which they really make a difference. So the magnitude is given from the strength of the research center. And there is a direction. Any vector has got a direction. So I would say that our logo is, um, is a vector toward a better future in some ways. Brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, the designer of the Mission Winner logo, Mr. Fabio Novembre. Thank you. Thank you. It looks fantastic on the bike. I'm, I'm sure you'll agree, pointing towards the future. You, you stay with us up on stage, Fabio, because there's a final request. And to complete our lineup uh, up here on the stage, I'd like to call on three more key components in Ducati's success this season. Uh, please put your hands together for Ducati Corsi Sporting Director Paolo Ciabatti, Mission Winnow Ducati Team Manager Davide Tardozzi, and Ducati MotoGP Test Rider Michele Pirro. Thank you very much, Paolo and Davide. Take a step forward. We want to see you in the light a little bit, uh, Paolo. But, you know, we've seen the technical guys. Uh, we've seen the bikes and the riders. Um, it looks to me like all the key elements are in place for a successful season. <laughs> Would you agree? Yeah, actually, I agree. I think uh, we have a very well-balanced team. I think uh, a very competitive uh, team with two riders who are... Uh, very fast, but also they can work together, as Gigi said. So I think uh, this is the best setup to achieve uh, the best possible result, which is fighting to win the championship. And if this bike is as fast as it looks great, in my opinion, I think it's going to be a great season. It's the key, it's the key, isn't yeah. it, as well? Uh, Davide, as team manager, uh, how excited does it make you to see your riders in full colours, full kit, on the bikes, ready to go for 2019. Does that excite you? Yeah, very exciting looking at the red bike in this really red colour, very aggressive. So, uh, very difficult to speak after Claudio and Gigi that already explain uh, <laughs> what is uh, the passion, technology and uh, the support we have uh, and uh, the talent we have. So, in this moment, I'm so excited and looking forward for the next test. And you mentioned talent there, Davide. On the end is MotoGP test rider for Ducati, uh, Michele Pirro. And Michele, you're going to be the first one to ride this bike. When we go to Sepang in, uh, in just over a week's time, when you do that shakedown test, how are you and how much are you looking forward to the next challenge? Yes, it's my seventh uh, season uh, with the um, Ducati team. Uh, I'm recovering from uh, the, um, the operation to the shoulder. And every day I feel better. Uh, I'm really happy because every year uh, um, we have uh, improved the, the bike and uh, the result. Uh, we we um, uh, know that uh, uh, every year is more difficult, uh, but uh, uh, we are ready, uh, and uh, I we are ready, and I cannot uh, wait uh, uh, to be in Sepang for uh, test uh, this beautiful bike uh, that uh, I know I test in Valencia last year and uh, have a good potential for a battle for uh, the, the title. And uh, good luck uh, to Dovi and uh, Danilo for uh, this uh, this season. And good luck to you as well for testing, ladies and gentlemen, Michele Piro, David Tardozzi and Paolo Ciabatti. Let's have a round of applause uh, for them. Thanks to you all. And actually, 
to complete the family photo, uh, let's welcome back up onto the stage uh, Mirek Zielinski, Claudio Domenicali and Gigi Dalinia. Uh, let's get them back up as well on stage to join. Let's have another round of applause. Why not? <laughs> You know what, I'm going to ask you while you're all up here, what do you think, Mirek, what do you think of the bike and how it looks? I, I can't be more proud seeing this. And the fact that we are in our cube is really hard, hard, hard touching. Cla Claudio, thank, it's thank you, Claudio, for this opportunity. It looks fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah, normally I think that the, really, the bike that looks good are the bikes that are fast. So actually, <laughs> let's, let's wait and see the result in Sepang. The bikes are not bad. But let's see if, if they're fast enough. And Gigi, you know more than any of us that what's underneath that good-looking bike is also looking good as well. Is that fair to say? Yeah, honestly speaking, I'm really proud about this bike. And I'm really pr proud about the people that do this bike. Thank you very much to everybody, for all of us, uh, all of you who have been on stage. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen, your mission winner, Ducati team and its riders in situ and ready for the 2019 campaign. It's exciting times for everyone, of course. Many thanks uh, to those of you at home and around the world as well who have joined us to watch this presentation. And for you, those, uh, those of you here in Switzerland, uh, you're going to have the opportunity now to take a few photos with the riders on board their bikes uh, and meet the team and speak to everybody here as well. So on behalf of everyone watching who's watching you in this room and, and back home as well. I'd like to wish you all the very best on what will be a challenging, long season uh, that you've all got ahead of you. And we're excited to see if you can make that final step towards glory this year in 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mission Winnow Ducati and the season is not far away. Let's give them all a big round of applause and all the best for 2019. <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining us today. Good evening.